I just love these simple bead crochet chain necklaces. I've been wearing and selling these for years. I actually started making them because I have really sensitive skin. This cotton thread is so soft and lightweight, but the glass beads make it hang just really nicely, I think. Today I'll talk about what beads work well for this super easy project, and I'll give you my own basic bead pattern, and then we'll crochet a continuous loop necklace. So those are examples of what you can do with what we're gonna to learn today. And yeah, you've seen this basic, you know, crochet pattern before or people making necklaces. I think what's different about this one is we use super tiny thread. To me, it looks like a chain chain, you know, jewelry chain, I don't know. To me, it looks like chain. And the fact that it's cotton is lovely. I love soft jewelry. I'm gonna show you my little, little pattern here for you, which I, I don't know, I like. And then I'm also in the future going to do some more. These all, those all just came off of like my jewelry stand in my room. So though I will be doing um, a video on the leaves and the flowers for sure. Maybe a hand painting one video. Oh, and what else? Wait, 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 wait. There's more. So earrings would be fun. These look really pretty on. They're long. So I thought this was really pretty. These are like four inches long. They're pretty long. <laughs> and then also, I started making pendants. And I couldn't find one that I have. I, I put them on a metal chain. I just think they're adorable. And then you put them like this on a on a chain. vintage -y chain. I just thought they were so pretty. Some size 10 crochet cotton. I'm not exactly sure how much, but it's very, very little. Um, once you get one of these spools, they'll last you a long time. <sighs> I went online to try to tell you the, like, the perfect hook to use, and I had a really hard time because apparently <laughs> numbers don't mean anything. I mean, the millimeters is all you can go by, and I have this old one that only says number one, and even looking up boy hook sizes, um, there's a bunch of different ones when you get into this realm of hooks. So I would say choose a hook that is small enough for your thread to make a nice tight chain. This one that I use the most is, it's now this is another thing. I didn't even buy this that long ago. Only it's been years, but not like 50 years or anything. Um, this is number four, one and a quarter. I found no chart whatsoever that described a number four as being one and a quarter millimeters. <laughs> so I found this other kind of backup one in my stash. It says nine and 1.4 millimeters, which again, I looked at a bunch of charts. I could not find this combination on any of them, which is really weird. And then this one's significantly bigger but it was still I mean it still worked fine like if you're not comfortable using a teeny tiny and you can't see too well I have to use my good glasses you know to do it too but <laughs> um this one works fine here's the one I I like to use is this one with the handle because my hands are old and broken and you also need some of these uh flexible beading needles they're called you can find them at um any place that sells beads basically I got these at Joann's I bought them at Michael's and they come in uh, usually a six or 12 pack because they're so teeny, they're easy to lose. It's nice to have backups, but you can see how the eye is big enough to get the yarn in there. So these are good to use for this type of project. So we also need some beads, right? So I have um, two sizes of seed beads, size six. These are um, translucent glass, right? Frosted glass. I like them because they look like sea glass. Then I'll also use the um, 11 seed beads and these are I have found the smallest beads I can fit on this size 10 thread so and they're pretty tiny so it's pretty cool I like to get metallics of those as well because to me it makes it seem more um, jewelry like you know with the metallics I'm digging out of a box that I used to take to uh, my craft shows <laughs> and I would just put a bunch in here so I could dig around and make some jewelry while I was working my booth okay so here's like some I did some like copper metallic I always like that one and I'm gonna show you of course you can do it however you want but I'm gonna show you my design and my how I do it I'll get to the design in a minute but big seed beads little seed beads and then two focal beads which I rotate so here's some focal beads I have just in my little box this is like my favorite color right now like that peacock blue oh I love that color one of the colors I dyed my clothes that I used to sell. So when I show you how to make little flower necklaces, you can add leaf beads that look pretty cool with them. I like these glass pearls too. They come in all different 
colors and they're really inexpensive I think they look good the finish lasts long really well and maybe I'd mix those with like you know a tan shell or something got a bunch of these like little uh, danglies they have little holes these are actually dyed oyster shells I mean basically any beads that are um, have a hole big enough to fit your thread that you're using will work fine you know um, I personally don't usually go beyond six to eight millimeters in size that's how I pick my beads okay and now we'll talk about um, our design here are the beads I'm gonna use okay you're going to string all of the beads ahead of time so you need to figure out your exact design I use a super simple repeating pattern over right here that's my glass seed bead okay my bigger seed bead and then I'm gonna have another dealio and then I'm gonna have my little dangle dangle deal and another seed bead okay and like that a big seed bead spacer that's my little pattern in between here's how many stitches I do one stitch here one stitch here seven here seven here one one seven that's my pattern okay that's how many stitches I do in between these this is the end of my repeat this one. come on these guys okay there's some of those really like beautiful brown faceted beads I love brown is it weird that my brown's my favorite color I don't know I love brown if there's a brown one I'll take it okay so I have these six groupings I'm concerned about these ones because they don't take up any space and I usually don't take um, that into account because when they're long it doesn't really matter when they're short though it needs to go over my head so I think what I'm gonna do is just add another grouping okay so I'm figuring out how many beads I need <laughs> it's not going very well <laughs> okay so this is a 24 inch necklace that's what we're gonna do ish okay but if you're doing your own pattern basically if you take the length total length divide it by your pattern length the repeating part and that'll give you how many repeats you need okay and then that'll tell you how many beads in here that you need and then we will get started this is how we're gonna do it first we need to thread all our beads on that's why we need to know how many we need because we need to thread them all on uh, ahead of time before we start okay I got my flexible needle that I can barely see Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here okay I don't I just leave it on my cone here my ball I don't take it off I swear I'm having a hard time here <laughs> I'm not doing good. Okay, no, it's great. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, so I'm just going to start. Well, it's just like being back in my booth. It's so exciting. A little seed bead. A focal bead. Another little seed bead. Now I need a bigger spacer bead, which I'm going to do metallic. Then another little one. And the other focal bead. Because, again, I like to alternate them. You don't have to. This is just how I always do them. I think it's more interesting. Okay, then another little seed bead on the other side of it. Now, is that a whole pattern yet? No, I need another. I just want to show you what the whole pattern looks like. To repeat. Okay, now we're ready to repeat, right? Okay, and I'm just going to keep going until I have, what did I say? Seven groups like that, all right? And I always try to make sure that the little shells are facing the same way. It's easy to forget that stuff. Oh, sitting in my booth. How's it going? So easy to put it down, too, if I needed to help somebody, but also a fun thing to do. You don't want to just sit there staring at people. It's quite awkward. Um, so it's nice to have something to do. You don't want to get too busy, either, because you want to keep an eye on things. But also, people don't really like it when you're just staring at them. When they walk up, it's like, um, hi. It's been a while since I made it, but I used to make these all the time, and they're really fun to make. Plus, they're pretty fast. And I think they're really pretty. Obviously, I have, like, a dozen of them. <laughs> I didn't even bring out all of them. Oh well. Hey man, I like to make things that I want. That way if you don't sell it, you can wear it yourself. 
Okay, I got all my beads on there. I decided to go seven sets, right, to make sure, make up for the skinny ones I'm using. Now I just need to follow my pattern. Okay, here's my pattern. Oops. So I've done it in such a way that it matches up with the beginning because I'm going to do a continuous loop, like I mentioned. Continue, like what would be next here should be over here on the left, right? Okay, so I did that. And then if you're going to use um, a clasp, you could definitely put a clasp on this. You probably want it to be symmetrical. So keep that in mind when you're deciding where to stop the pattern, you know? Okay. So now we're just going to work our pattern. I got my little dealio here. I did this once already, but I didn't record it because I, you ever do that? You think you're recording, but you push the button at the wrong time. It wasn't recording. And then you have a nice uh, video of yourself cleaning up and stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to take just a few of these beads up closer. But let's see what I got. Seven stitches. I like to start with the seven. The, the stitches in between rather than the the um, bead right away because when you finish you're gonna have to weave in the ends and um, it's a little easier then I'm gonna bring up a bead I'm gonna bring like I said I'm gonna bring a few with me so I don't have to keep going back so I got a big spacer now we're gonna do a, a bead stitch uh, it's just a chain where you put the bead up close to the chain before you do it and then you trap it in there. Make the loop as long as the bead so that it kind of catches on the top as much as possible. It is going to be on one side, but that keeps it from getting like too wonky. Um, can you see that? You can, right? I got too much shit in the background. Go away so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, then what I'm going to do, what, seven more? One, two, three, four five six seven bring up a bead baby one okay then i'm going to just do one in between these little ones and the focal bead okay this is bigger one gotta get that loop right up there and then you can tighten it up after but otherwise if you got it too tight it's going to be on the side it's going to look weirder this kind of incorporates it a little bit better i think okay one more one then a um, bead okay three Four, five, six, seven, seven. Ah, don't fight with me. Please. Seven. Okay, then I got a big spacer bead. Big seed bead. Anyway. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See how I'm, I'm shoving my, my hook to make the, the hole a little bigger. Otherwise, if it's too tiny, it's really hard to do, you know? One, and then I'm gonna, oops, closer. Okay, what have I got? I'm on the baby one. I need one stitch and then a shell. And another stitch and then the baby. This makes me, reminds me of my, my craft fair days, which really weren't that long ago. I miss it because I loved it, but not because I want to do it right now. <laughs> and I don't miss it in such a way that like, oh, I wish I could go back out there because I definitely could if I wanted. Okay, so you get the idea. That's pretty cute. Cute. Sparkly. <laughs> I love these. Okay, so let me carry on. Now, when I get to the end, I'm doing a continuous loop, like I said. If I was going to do a clasp, I'd probably, I would make it um, 
symmetrical, like I said, and I would end with a chain. And then I could just put a crimp, right? An end crimp. And then a clasp would be easy. I think I have one with a clasp, maybe. Now what I do, this is just how I do it, okay? Do it however you want. I like it to be flat because again, as I tell you to, I tell you not to be perfectionist because I at heart am a perfectionist and I fight it every day. I like to make it flat so that it's, you know, not twisted up. But again, you really don't have to. I don't know that it looks any different. This is just my own uptight thing that I have to do to make sure it's perfect. No. <laughs> What'll happen if you're not perfect? Then what happens? Things could blow up. This necklace could like disintegrate. I have no idea. Nothing happens. <laughs> Nothing happens. I mean, it might've when you were a little kid and that's the problem. Okay, so I'm saying it's here, right there. Then I'm gonna slip stitch into the first stitch. And I'm gonna slip stitch probably like five, okay, from the start. So, one, five. Okay, and again, I'm gonna leave. Uh oh, do I have any scissors here? Uh oh. Did I start this whole thing without having scissors? Oh, wait, here's some. <laughs> I'm so well prepared. Okay. So I left these longer kind of ones, so I'll show you how I'm going to weep them in. But hey, hey, that's pretty cute. No? Isn't it? Oh, wait. I like these to turn over because they're shiny. Shiny. Look at how cute. Uh, mm -hmm. Also a great bracelet. It's too big. See? Okay, I'm sorry. That's adorable. And it's comfy. Look, oh, comfy. Adorbs. Okay, I'm just going to finish the ends for you. And just, all I do is weave them in as best I can to make it as invisible as possible. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But honestly, I try to just go back and forth. Um, Like one loop and then the next other side loop. I don't know. I don't know if I can explain exactly how I do it, but I kind of try to alternate which loop. I don't know. It's actually been a while since I've done this. And then I go down into this one. So then I go up this one. It's pretty invisible. Over the beads, it's a little harder to keep it invisible, but... It's really, you'll be shocked how unnoticeable it is. And then if it comes out more, you just trim it. That's why I leave a nice long tail. So if I weave it and weave it, I usually only weave it past a couple beads. I don't usually use the whole thing. But even still, that far, if it comes out, you can just trim it. And it's not going to ruin it. I'm going to just trim it real close, but not too close. Because I want it to come out. It's so cute. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? No, I don't think so. So I'll be coming back with some more in the future. Why, Toad?